Cool. Man, it's really an honor to be up here. The talks at this conference have been amazing. Can I just get a, like, a round of applause for like, all the previous speakers? Okay. Uh, really inspiring. Oh, do you have the clicker? Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, now I accidentally clicked through you. Okay. So we'll see how it works out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, my name's Griff Green. I work with Giveth. Uh, I've been building DAOs since 2015 on the Ethereum blockchain uh, and have been focusing on DAOs for charity since 2016. And I'm really excited to talk about this uh, sort of what I would, I would say is almost unimaginable uh, opportunity that we have to really change the way incentives are aligned around, altruis around altruism in general. Uh, I want to start by saying economic systems are incredible. They have given us so much in this world. Like here we all are, uh, you know, we don't have to go farming, we have a division of labor and, and really money itself, the economic systems that we live in have changed the world and, and given us a lot of freedoms. Uh, they scale coordination uh, uh, really effectively. No one had to tell someone to throw down a blockchain conference in Vienna. It just happened because the people, the organizers here knew that uh, there was a demand, so they made it happen. Uh, the standard of living is huge. So many people here have a phone in their pocket. No government told you to get that phone in your pocket. You know, there's, uh, there's so much abundance that we have access to, and I got to give it all to economic systems. Like they've, they've brought us here where we are today. Uh, and it, it does an amazing job at uh, bringing individual needs to the surface and satisfying those individual needs. But of course, it fails at uh, more collective needs. Uh, and there's a lot of corruption and gameability in these systems that you know, leave a little bit to desire. And so I would say that it's great that we have economic systems, but the monopoly of economic systems that are generally imposed uh, create some holes. And uh, the biggest one is, of course, value distribution and wealth distribution and inequality. Uh, but another one is also externalities that aren't well accounted for in the economic systems. So most of these are shared resource issues, pollution, healthcare. Uh, there's also social well-being that is really not accounted for in the economic systems that we have today, uh, at least outside of the crypto space. Uh, and this creates a tragedy of the commons. And I think most of the people here probably have heard that phrase before. Uh, the organizations that come to fill in the gaps to avoid the tragedy of the commons, to solve these tragedy of the commons issues, are superheroes. Uh, the governments, the NGOs, the charities, they really come out and they, they overcome the economic incentives and s supply solutions that everyone can use to solve these issues, right? But there's still problems with them, unfortunately. You know, the governments are not always trusted. There's a lot of opportunity for corruptions, especially, uh, corruption, especially in uh, communities where they kind of expect corruption. So, you know, it's not so bad in Europe, and, uh, in this, but it's still there. And charities, it's even worse because they don't have the funding solution that governments have. Governments can kind of impose uh, taxation so that they, they can get funding for the tragedy, to solve the tragedy of the commons issues. Charities don't have that luxury. They have to double down on fundraising and marketing so that they can get people to care about the cause and get funding to actually solve it. Uh, and trust in charities is really on the downswing right now. Uh, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. Uh, and yeah, and I'll go into more of this. So I just want to go through an example of a charitable system, right? Somebody who has an opportunity to change the world and make it better, right? No one wants plastic in the ocean. There's actually value for all of humanity if we can solve this issue. Uh, the oceans would be improved, but no one owns the oceans. This isn't something that anyone has an individual benefit for, so it's kind of lost in our economic models. Uh, this, if we have uh, someone who has a great idea to get rid of uh, plastic in the ocean, he gets his research together, they make a plan, they start a Swiss foundation, a Swiss nonprofit to raise millions of dollars, people donate, they have this awesome idea, it's going to work, you know, they uh, actually find a way to make magic algae, to, they take the algae already in the ocean, they have it eat plastic, it's a miracle, plastics are no longer an issue anymore, and then, well, the Swiss foundation's mandate is no longer worth s fulfilling, and so they all get laid off, and, and that's the end of the story, right? That kind of sucks, right? Uh, what, what happens in the economy, in like uh, the for-profit world, you know, these entrepreneurs, they'll actually like maybe instead of, 
using algae to get rid of plastics in the ocean, they, they use it to feed livestock, right? And then they get millions of dollars in investment from VCs, and uh, after years of work, they can produce this algae and sell it in the open market. They, they all make money, right? Before, when they're getting rid of plastics in the, ocean, in the ocean, the entrepreneurs and researchers probably took a pay cut, you know, so they can do the good work. And uh, here, they can actually get raises because their, their work was a success. And instead of, uh, you know, shutting down the foundation because it solved the problem, now they can actually, you know, uh, sell, the, sell the company and make a huge profit, right? Uh, in, in the charity model, the system is misaligned, right? These great people are working so hard and they're, they're pushing the boundaries and, and doing great work for the world and creating value. But in the end, the, the participants all have to work out of their own like altruism and they don't receive the benefits of, of their good work. And whereas in the for-profit system, you see that it's like clear wins for everybody. Uh, oh. So I actually think that there's value here. It's just not being captured by the economies we have today in the, in the default world, right? In the like, normal economic system. There is value. And I think economies actually have the opportunity to coordinate people around creating this value. It's the best coordination tool we have uh, that scales large, uh, effectively. And uh, the people at Giveth and uh, actually also Block Science are collaborating together. We've been studying uh, the nonprofit world for uh, several years now. Uh, we are a nonprofit ourselves. We, we have uh, sacrificed uh, other opportunities in the blockchain space to build an awesome uh, free platform for everyone to use for transparent donations. We don't take a cut. Everyone who donates, 100% of the money goes directly to whatever cause they want to donate to. It's a beautiful platform that people have, uh, really talented individuals have uh, designed and built. And uh, we, but we see the incentive issues around building something like this. Because, you know, we had, to, we had to give up and the people who donate to fund it, you know, they get nothing in return. If they would have put that into an ICO in 2017, oh my God, you know. Uh, but they didn't. They actually built this beautiful thing that we all get to share. Um, so in that research that we've had, we, we've been also have been watching uh, these three coins. Has anyone heard of Namecoin? It was the first fork. Oh, wow. We got a good crypto crew. What about PrimeCoin? Anyone hear that one? Oh, yeah. Okay. And CureCoin? We got one. Two. Okay. That's too bad. This is a, this is a beautiful coin. But the, so Namecoin was the first altcoin that was ever created. Still running today. Uh, it creates an uh, opportunity to, do, uh, to buy a censorship-resistant domain name, right? So anyone in the world can die, buy a .bit domain. And it's really weird, no one does it. <laughs> uh, no one cares, right? But yet the thing keeps going. People can buy these .bit domains. If this was a startup, it would have failed. If it was a charity, there never would have had a chance raising donations. But it's an economy, it's an economic machine that everyone can use. And whatever the volatility of the token, it's gone up, it's gone down, that speculation uh, around it has been successful or not, depending on when you get in. But the underlying commons that it produces is unstoppable, and it's been unstoppable for the better, better part of a decade. PrimeCoin is a very interesting cryptocurrency. It actually, uh, to mine PrimeCoin, you gotta find a prime number that hasn't been found before. So it's actually discovered 30 million prime numbers. Okay, this is ridiculous, right? This is the most successful uh, mathematical research in the theory of prime numbers ever. Like this, if anything finds a pattern for prime numbers, it's this current, this economy. It's an economic machine. It's actually gotten hackers to build viruses and your grandma is mining prime numbers and they don't even know it. Your grandmas are, are doing this, I promise. Because it's a huge botnet. And it's, it's crazy, you know? But CureCoin is really around, along the lines of what Giveth is trying to do. Uh, CureCoin, there's this uh, awesome altruistic project, project called Folding at Home, where people can use uh, the c computing power in the background of their machine uh, to fold and unfold proteins for cancer research, Alzheimer's research, uh, you know, all sorts of research. And CureCoin decided to just build an economy on top of it. And ever since it's done that, within the first month, it was number one on the list, and it's been number one on the list of participants for Folding at Home since its existence. And what's really interesting here is that 
it doesn't have any altruistic, I mean, there are people that, if you're going to altruistically fold proteins, you're going to do that with folding at home. The people who are participating in this economy are doing it out of their own self-interest. There are speculators that think, hey, I can make a little money off CureCoin. You know, and maybe they like the idea behind CureCoin a little bit better than the other shitcoin, right, that they might s diversify into. Uh, and then you have miners that are fed from the speculation of the speculators that are folding and unfolding proteins, and they don't even care. They don't care about the, say, you know, curing cancer. Maybe they do a little bit, but the, the miner will just point to Monero if it's more profitable. So these unstoppable economies, they don't ask for grants. You know, once they're up and running, it just goes. And it's very inspiring. And there's a lot of opportunity to use the economies that these blockchains have done uh, for the real world. And that's give its goal, right? And these things have been going nonstop for well over five years, like all three of them, and have done a lot of good and provided a lot of interesting uh, service for the world, for the commons, but that's all in the digital realm. And give its goal is to actually take this out of the digital realm and bring it to the real world. Uh, we, uh, this, I'm not going to go into the, like, the whole solution. I actually have a talk, well, not a talk, but I'll talk more about the design outside uh, at the end of the next break, so you can come see that. But basically what we use are we use some crypto economic primitives, token bonding curves, and uh, this uh, governance model con called conviction voting that uh, block science has really uh, built. That's very cool. Uh, we use the token bonding curves to actually create a, a programmatic tax. This is the magic of digital currencies. We don't need accountants or, or regulatory agencies to enforce taxation. We can actually do it directly in the economy. And people who opt in, they don't, it's, it's in the system, so they know they're getting into it in advance. And it also creates a market feedback loop so that if the, the charity that you start, the economy that you're participating in, isn't doing a good job, well, copy, paste, deploy another one. And they would compete. And you would actually have more value in the one that makes more impact. This is a really exciting opportunity. Uh, and then the conviction voting, the uh, governance model, uh, is very novel. It's similar to TCRs, but with a, with a time component. And, uh, the, and, but it's all built on top of the Giveth DAP. So the Giveth DAP was made for experiments in decentralized governance that can realign incentives around a common good. And I feel like this is the opportunity we have. Oh yeah, uh, I'll, I, a TCR is called a, a, a token curated registry. Our system is a little bit different than a registry. A registry is, a, is ordering a list, right? Here we actually have a set of uh, milestones in a DAP, in, in, on the Give It DAP. Uh, you could think of like uh, a charity that maybe wants to end homelessness in Vienna. Although you guys have a great solution, like I gotta say, uh, Vienna has a very strong social wel welfare program and you guys do great with uh, the government solutions. Uh, so, but at the same time, this comes at a cost of taxpayers that get no return on the value they're creating. Here we actually have an opportunity to uh, have competitive discovery on what is the most impactful solution for those funds, right? Um, anyway, I, I'm going to keep going because I don't have too much time. But uh, we use the Giveth DAP to allow for grassroots ideas to float to the top and compete against each other. And the most impactful uh, ones will raise the uh, awareness of the project. So that will be the ones that the governance system would want to choose. Because here we have a, a competing opportunity for altruism. In the normal altru, if you want to do, if you want to solve the problem of, of homelessness in Vienna, you could donate directly to a homeless shelter. Uh, and get nothing, and maybe you get your name on a wall or something, which is really cool, and, it, and it's important. Uh, but if you participate in the system, you would get actually an asset, a token, that you can sell later, right? Once the problem has solved, you can, and you can use that token to choose to s send money from the commons to that uh, homeless shelter, the same homeless shelter that you want, right? And if, let's say, the whole governance breaks down, the whole system doesn't work, 
Well, you can just sell your tokens and donate directly because the DAP is an open system. The Commons is one actor in the donation landscape, and the system can take any actor's funds and have transparent donations flow out. Uh, this is the system. It's crazy. Okay, this is why it's not ready yet. It's not done because it's a very complicated system and it takes actual engineering work that doesn't happen that much in the crypto space right now. In fact, what? Oh, I wasn't. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, token engineering in this crypto space is a sad. It's a sad state. Like, there's a reason we don't have. We don't have a seat at the table in normal engineering sciences, so we don't use the tool. We don't use the same kind of level of tools that other engineering sciences have. It's a it's a nascent field. So, uh, but I'm really excited to work with Block Science Crew because they're actually bringing uh, a actual engineering work into the space. Uh, we're missing like when people people do that whole white paper thing and then build it. This is okay, but we're miss we need to be able to formally verify and uh, sorry and validate our uh, our and our designs and use simulations and the best practices uh, that exist today and take those learnings and then build something and then iterate and come back to the designs and we can do this with the tools that block science brings. Uh, so I'm very excited to take that work. It's going to take time to build these complex systems. But uh, if you want to follow along with uh, our progress, uh, please feel free, of course, to donate to us. Uh, we live off donations. If you want to find out more, I gave a great talk at FCC. Uh, so you can just go put that in YouTube and you'll find my talk. Or you can follow our blog. We have a f uh, we're starting to have more communications about this, uh, this young system. So uh, please uh, follow me on Twitter or follow Giveth on Twitter and, and uh, stay engaged. Thank you.